Hey everybody, it's Russ. I just bought my ticket for Avatar, The Way of Water, and uh, I'm gonna go old school on you. When I first started my podcast, it was actually called um, Before and After the Movie. And it was a movie review podcast, and I would do the first part of the, the movie review before I saw the movie, and then I would see the movie, and then I would do the second half of the review after I saw it, tell you if I liked it or not. So anyway, I just bought my ticket. I'm actually gonna see it on Thursday, uh, January 19th, National Popcorn Day. So um, I'll let you know what I think of it. But for now, I'm gonna do the first part and tell you what I think I'm gonna like it or not. So stay tuned for part one and then stay tuned further for part two. So this is the before the movie uh, review. So what are my thoughts on Avatar 2, The, the Way of Water? Well, and do I think I'm gonna like it? So I'll give you the short answer for, I think I'm gonna like this movie. Um, I'm, I'm seeing it very late in the game, and the reason for that is I have, um, I have you know, a family, two, two small kids, and it's just hard for, you know, to get time to go see a, a long movie like this. And the other thing that's special about Avatar 2 is that this is a movie really meant for the big screen, and if you could do it, like the IMAX 3D version. So... It took a little while to you know get a screening where i could get the seat that i want get it reserved and make sure that i get to see this film the way i want to see it and a lot of times you know it was hard to to get my reserve ticket ahead of time and finally i work with my wife and say hey i think i want to go see it on this day also it was uh, national popcorn day so that was kind of special to go on National Popcorn Day and get popcorn at half price too, so that helped. So it took a while to see it. Now the thing, this film has, is by the time you're listening to this, has made about $2 billion. So if this thing was terrible, I mean absolutely horrible, it would not have made $2 billion. It might have made $1 billion, like you would have got enough people into the theater to see it and they would have told you how terrible it is and he filmed it on old VHS cameras and he just did it to punk everybody, but that's not the case. Or if it was just a bad movie, well, well-intentioned, but a bad movie. Yeah, I think you would have heard that. May not be perfect, but obviously people, you know, want to go see this movie and they're seeing it on the, you know, the they're waiting to see it on the, you know, the IMAX screen like I'm doing, and it's it's keeping up and it's um, doing very well. So I think it's going to be a good movie. I don't know if it's going to be perfect. I've heard most, some people, I've tried to stay away from it as much as I can. And people say, you know, it's visually spectacular, but, you know, maybe this story isn't the greatest in the world. But that's kind of true with, with James Cameron movies anyway, especially with The Last Avatar. It seemed to borrow a lot from other movies. Well, anyway, I want to talk about, before I get more into the movie, I do want to say a few words about James Cameron and what an extraordinary filmmaker this man is. I remember going to see Terminator in the theaters when I was a teenager. I think it was back in 1984. You know, we'd go to the theater a lot with my, my teenage friends. That was one of the first things when you start doing stuff with your friends. You can Your parents let you go do. They let you go see movies. And one of the films we saw was, was The Terminator. And I remember seeing it, and a lot of films you see, and especially back in the 80s, a lot of them, especially some of the sci-fi stuff, if it wasn't Star Wars, it was probably some Star Wars ripoff that wasn't very good, or Mad Max ripoff that wasn't very good. But this Terminator was good. And I remember coming out of it and just talking about all these different things and the whole time travel theory and all that, but it stayed with me. And I was very impressed with it. And then a couple years later, Aliens came out. Now, I was a big Alien fan. I always loved the Alien from Aliens, or the Alien from Alien. And so they were making a sequel of it. And I thought, I don't know, is this going to be any good? And it was an amazing film, you know, very different from Alien. And that's when James Cameron really came on my radar. And I was in, I was back also when, you know, the early, the mid-80s is when I wanted to become, started becoming a filmmaker as a, a teenager in high school. So I was paying attention to more films and filmmakers that I really liked. And James Cameron was certainly one of those. And Aliens was just an amazing film. I used to take people to go see it. Sometimes, you know, movies were so good that I would go back and I would see them again and again. And I always look forward to taking people who hadn't seen the movie to go see it just so I could watch the reaction when certain scenes would come up. 
But uh, Aliens was one of those movies. And then a few years later after that, The Abyss came out. Now, The Abyss certainly wasn't a perfect movie, but those digital effects that they... That was the first time I was watching James Cameron films, and you were like, how did they do that? You know, I think the Queen Alien and Alien was was one of those effects. You look at some of those shots and you wondered how they did it. Um, but, but in The Abyss with that tentacle, the water tentacle, was just some amazing shots. And um, even though it wasn't a perfect film, it was pretty amazing to watch. But then T2. In 1991, Terminator 2 came out. And that film was just floored me. I, I remember seeing it with my friends, you know, at night. It must have been a Friday night. And then Saturday morning, I, afternoon, I had to go see it again because those visual effects, I had no idea how they did some of that stuff. And so by this point, by 91, I was, a, I was a, you know, had graduated from college and I knew about filmmaking. I knew about different, you know, blue screen, stop motion, you know, all these effects that they did, the, the painting, the, the, you know, background paintings and all this stuff, reverse projection, all this stuff that they could do to make, to pull these special effects off. But watching Terminator 2, I had no idea how they did some of that stuff and was just blown away. And I had to go see it the next, the next morning, the next afternoon, and um, just extraordinary movie. That and then True Lies a few years after that was okay. I wasn't you know a huge True Lies fan. I thought Jamie Lee Curtis was amazing in that, and I love that red Corvette, that 1958 uh, red Corvette that was in that. And then Titanic. Now I remember when Titanic was being made, and all the money he was spending on the Titanic. And a Titanic movie had recently come out and didn't do so well. And I remember talking with friends, and I'm like, "How how does he think he's going to do this? You know, um, who's going to want to see a Titanic movie? And certainly, who's going to want to see it with, with you know at this price? Like, how is he ever going to make this money back?" And it was kind of crazy. I don't know why it was kind of pulling against him. I don't know what what it was. Maybe I thought he was kind of wasting his time on making kind of a fuddy duddy film on this old, you know. It's turn of the century ship liner, the Titanic. And I just thought maybe it was just not the film for me. And then it came out, and obviously I'm not your your you know, your Leo DiCaprio fan demographic. So that didn't do a whole lot for me. And I, I remember when it came out, and and again, this gets into some of his writing. You know, his good guys are always so great, and the bad guys are ooh, they're so villains. There's not a lot of gray a lot of times in James Cameron films. Um anyway, uh but what funny thing happened was it, it became you know the biggest one of the big the big, the big at the time the biggest movie of all time. But I was blown away, and the movie really did stay with me. It was the music, it was the visuals, the effects, and the 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 grand scale of it all. And um, I, I I got to admit I I became a convert to it. I bought the CDs, and anytime I could see that film, if I hadn't seen it in a while, I would. And I remember when it was leaving the theaters, like I would, I drove a long way to see it one last time, you know, in the theater. And I know it's coming back out again. I'll probably go check it out again on the, the big screen one more time. Um, just, just for the visual impact of the film. And again, speaking to James Cameron's ability to, you know, visually deliver on these films. And then that brings us to Avatar, you know, several years. Then it's like, what do you, how do you follow Titanic, right? And then this movie Avatar comes out. And I wasn't even so sure about that. And, you know, once again, you know, blown away by the visuals the of the film. You know, maybe the writing wasn't so great or there was, you know, again, it borrowed, it seemed to borrow from a lot of other films. But, but nobody, I remember talking, you know, to my brother-in-law about, about Cameron. It's like nobody does action like James Cameron. And this this guy's a, a just a master in action. And and uh, I, I think of the, the scene in Avatar where the colonel is jumping out of the ship as it's crashing. And it's just one thing after the other. This guy just doesn't jump out of the ship. You know, so many things happen and it's bang, 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 bang. And just a, amazing action in that film. And, you know, he hasn't made a, a lot of films, but when he makes them, he certainly does make them, and he certainly does deliver. So I'm looking forward to Avatar 2. Um, obviously, I think it's going to be visually spectacular. I love animals, so I'm, I'm curious to see what he does with all the animals, the aquatic animals in the film. And the other thing is, you know, now as I'm watching it, I've got a young family, so I think that the characters, they that the main the Marine character has a family now. So that might be impactful for me. 
again, I don't know. You know, we'll see how he does with good guys, bad guys. Um, and uh, I do want to. I want to say also that there is a podcast called Blockbuster. It's a great podcast. Look it up. Season one dealt with George Lucas and Steven Spielberg as they were making Jaws and Star Wars. And season two was about James Cameron. So if you're a James Cameron fan, definitely check out the podcast Blockbuster. You know, you won't be disappointed. And I know if you're a James Cameron film, you probably like Star Wars and Jaws as well. And that first season is is pretty good too. Um, I'm, I'm happy that I'm going on National Popcorn Day. I'm happy that I'm going to see this film as it's, you know, nearing the $2 billion mark. And as an AMC investor, it'd be really nice if AMC, you know, squeezes or, or has some good price action uh, around this time. So all these things will contribute to happy memories. So I'm off. I got about an, an hour before the movie starts. So I finally, you know, a lot of times when I go see movies now, it's sort of spur of the moment. So I don't really have a lot of time to do the the before part of the podcast so there's it's been a while since i've done one of these movie reviews so i'm glad that i finally have time to sit down and record my thoughts before i see it so i think i'm gonna like it and we'll find out and i'll finish this movie review after the movie all right so i watched avatar 2 the way of water and you know what i did like it um for a lot of the reasons i thought i was going to like it and i have to say i'm so glad that I, I waited to see this on the IMAX 3D screen. Visually, it's amazing. Um, I, I would say more so than I thought. I had pretty high expectations, uh, but there are times you're just blown away. That They talk about this thing called Avatar Depression, that after you see, when people saw the original Avatar, they loved that world so much that when they went back into their own reality... <laughs> People got depressed because they wanted to be in the Avatar world. And I think I did suffer some of that the next day at work. Uh, people noticed, like, someone was asking me, like, hey, what's wrong? What's wrong? And what I mean, no one ever wants to be at work, you know. <laughs> um, but I think maybe that was part of it, that you go, you're in this world where it's, a, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. There are all these cool, amazing creatures. And what they do with these creatures, with these animals, and I've seen this with other movies, the, the the computer graphics that they do with these animals now is just amazing. It's just spectacular what these absolute wizards can do and bringing creatures and machines and stuff to life. It's just amazing. An amazing time to be a fan of movies. And sometimes the movies don't live up to the visual effects. But the, I mean, it really is. People have talked about avatar 2 being almost like a jacques Cousteau, uh, you know under undersea documentary except those documentaries i used to watch on tv as a kid you know the quality of those compared to the visuals on this is um you know the old 70s film left a lot to be desired compared to what they can do with these computer graphics and the imax screen but anyway but yeah they're the avatar depression yeah after you've been in this world and it is so immersive um, it's it's pretty amazing, and again, it, that's the power of the movies. That's the difference between streaming something on your TV at home, no matter how impressive that TV is, and being in that dark movie theater um, with that huge screen and that amazing sound, and it really does transport you to these amazing locations. Um, a couple things: the before the movie started, there was a preview for Ant Man. And I know I put out a video saying I'm going to have my uh, a story about uh, direct the director of Ant Man, Peyton Reed. I um I I know Peyton a little bit, and his his sort of he kind of bookend my Hollywood adventure, and I'm going to tell that story. I'm going to make a video for that. So anybody that came to my channel uh, because of that uh, that story, and you're waiting for that video, I'm working on it. Hopefully this week, and I'll get to it. I, in all honesty, I can't make, it's hard for me to make videos during the week just because of work and family. Um, when I do do it, it usually means I'm giving up sleep and, you know, I was becoming sleep deprived and that's not good. So usually I have to wait till the weekend to make some videos and I'm, I'm working on that video and hopefully I'll have that posted uh, this weekend by Sunday. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we look for that. Definitely buy tickets for Ant-Man. Looks so impressive. Um the other preview they had, they have the preview of Tom Cruise doing his Mission Impossible stunt where he jumps off the ramp, you know, with a parachute. And, uh, you know, I'm not the biggest Tom Cruise fan in the world, but it is absolutely impressive what this guy does as a stuntman. 
Um, pretty amazing, pretty amazing, uh, the stunts that he does. You know, I know he he does these to impress people, and and uh, you know what? I'm impressed. It's it's pretty amazing what this guy does, especially at his age, um, to do that. And and uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, again, talking about you know the strengths of Avatar two. I'm I'm not going to give away any spoilers. You know, in case you haven't seen the movie yet. Um, and, uh, but visually amazing, you know, definitely worth seeing on the big screen. If you can see it on IMAX 3d, it's worth it for that. Uh, at times it's so impressive. It looks like a nature documentary. So if you like aquatic life or animals in general, uh, it's pretty amazing. You you know, in a, in a bigger picture, one of the concerns I had was the, the, the characters, are they all going to be so good? The good people are so good and the bad people are so bad. And is there going to be any gray in these characters at all? And I think there is. I think he does strive for that. I don't know whether he listened to some of the criticism before um, and, and added that. Or it just worked out that way for the story. Uh, but it makes it to me, it makes it a lot more interesting when there's more um, dimensions and dynamics at play with characters that maybe the good characters aren't as good as they think they are. Maybe the bad characters aren't as bad as, you know, we think they are, that there's something there. And, um, you know, whether that's the Darth Vader aspect in star Wars, where he, you know, turns to the, the good side in the end and what that feeling was like when you see a character that's evil or bad and they make decisions with their life and they become a, a good person, um, so who knows, maybe we'll see a little bit of that in Avatar and future sequels. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, the family dynamic I thought worked very well that, you know, as, as a father myself, I have two young children. So when I was watching the film and he has a relationship with his sons, both his sons and his daughters, um, it made me think of my own, you know, family, my own kids and wanting to protect your family. I know we, we live in scary times right now. And uh, there's always, you know, honestly, there's always been scary times in human history. Uh, World War II was not was not so pleasant to live through. You know, Vietnam was not so pleasant to live through. 9-11 was not so pleasant to live through. The, the American Civil War was not so pleasant to live to. Uh, you know, slavery, um, the, the civil rights movement. You know, if you were African-American and you didn't enjoy the same rights as everybody. You know, there have always been challenging times for humans, but it does seem like right now, you know, we have our own set of dangers and that I worry about things spiraling out of control. And you, there is, I, so I, I understand that, that feeling of just wanting to protect your family and keeping them safe. So that, that aspect worked uh, for me. Um, although there are, there are a lot of scenes with the kids and it's, uh, it's always, Hey kids, don't do this. And the kids go, okay, we won't do it. And then of course the kids do it. And they get into trouble. And of course, that well, that's the movie. You know, if, what if the kids were so well behaved that they stayed safe? It would be kind of a, a boring movie at that point. So you kind of need that to, to get the movie going, get the conflict going. Um, you know, James Cameron, had a, he has kind of an engineering background. His father, I believe, was an engineer. And you always see these great machines in his movies, whether it's from the Terminator or the, you know, the load lifter and aliens or... You know, any any of these, you know, machines from the original Avatar. Um, and they, they, they certainly have those in this movie. If, you, if you're into the machines that he does, I won't even, I want to, you know, let you enjoy those for yourself uh, when you see the, the film. But yeah, they're there and they are pretty cool. Um, and uh, so watchable, you know, when you see the stuff on screen, it's so watchable what he does. And um and, and, you know, the body, you know, there's, you always see a lot of these body, you know, enhancement machines where people, you know, regular humans strap on these body enhancement machines. And you certainly see that as well. So, you know, it is a long movie. I, I you know, will criticize it for that a little bit. It is interesting. It keeps moving, but it is long. So physically trying to, you know, for me, obviously I'm, I'm there like an idiot with a huge Pepsi. And, uh, and I, I'm like, Hey, you know, when, when am I going to take my bathroom break here? (laughs) So I had to time it for that. Um, you know, could it be a shorter movie? Maybe, you know, what do you cut? I don't know. You know, maybe that's part of the enjoyment of this movie is seeing some of those, you know, the, the, 
the the scenes of the animals you know in nature and you can almost see someone saying like well cut that if you cut out all those scenes then it's a shorter movie but then does it lose some of the magic of of this movie if you do that and i think the length hurt it a little bit in the beginning a lot of people were dogging this movie because it didn't make the opening numbers that some people thought it would um and part of that was because it is a longer movie it was less less screenings of it in the beginning and the other thing is a lot of people were waiting to see it on that IMAX screen. So even though it was played on a ton of screens, like you could go see, you could want, you wanted to see the regular, you know, regular screening of Avatar. You could have done that probably on opening day. You could have walked in and got a ticket for just, you want to see it with no 3D on a regular screen. But everybody, I think, wanted to wait and see it on 3D and IMAX if they could. And that's why it's it's made $2 billion. And um, because people are, t you know, taking their time and coming around to seeing it and, and finally getting a chance to see it and it has those legs. So congratulations, James Cameron. Congratulations, 20th Century Fox. Congratulations, Disney. Congratulations, AMC, for having this huge hit out there and, you know, making this money and, and generating that profit for uh, for the theater company. Anyway, um, you know, we're set up for Avatar 3. That'll be out, you know, fairly soon, I think. I, I imagine it's next year. I, You know, check me on the dates on that. Google it to see when it's coming out. But there will be an Avatar 3. And I uh, can't wait. Should be exciting. It's the funny thing is, when I was watching this movie in the original Avatar, you know, they had the one battle scene where they take out the tree. And that's an impressive action scene. But then again, they have that huge action scene at the end. And I kept waiting, you know, in this film, I could kind of tell they kind of holding back on, you know, the action scenes. And um, I kept waiting, like, uh, you know, there's part of me that wanted that bigger action scene. But then there was another part of me that's like, you know, hey, is this thing going to wrap up? And, you know, are they, and are they saving that for the next film? So I think they're saving the huge, huge action scene for the next Avatar. Um, but the one that's in this one is still pretty impressive and still pretty cool. And I think you'll like it if you haven't seen it yet. So thanks for listening to this, you know, kind of a flashback episode of before and after the movie for the podcast. This is originally how the podcast started and before and after the movie. And then I've tried a few different things on it. And then I settled into the, the AMC stock story. So for all my AMC fans out there, um, hey, I hope you enjoyed you know, this movie review, the before and after movie review of Avatar. And, you know, maybe I'd like to do these more in the future if I could. I just, quite honestly, I don't get out to the movies very often. And when I do, sometimes it's spur of the moment. So I don't really have a chance to, to record the first part of the, the movie review. Anyway, thanks for listening. Good luck to my fellow AMC investors out there. And uh, tune in for the next episode of the AMC Stock Story.